Hey guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media, and this is five Ableton tips that are hidden from you from the surface, but are, are very, very useful when you get into production. So as you can see on the screen, we have a project in Ableton Live. Let's get into number one, uh, obviously. Um, and this is the freeze function. Now, this is, um, I think, relatively new. I think it's either eight or nine that they introduced freeze. Um, and freeze is essentially a way to minimize your CPU usage by allowing MIDI tracks to be transferred into audio tracks. Now, if you don't know what audio is, it's like when, if say I record a guitar or a uh, analog synthesizer, for instance, or a vocal, and the computer isn't generating that, it's just playing it back like iTunes would or, or like Winamp or whatever you use. But with MIDI, the computer is constantly processing what it has to do to play these notes, like a kick drum, over and over and over. So what Freeze does is it pre-renders that, that clip into an audio clip. So it doesn't have to keep on playing it over and over because it realizes, okay, I'm just doing this exact same thing over and over, so I'll just turn it into an audio clip that will play over and over instead of having to do it on the fly. So... What you do to enable freeze on a track is you right click on the MIDI channel. This is a MIDI channel. And we hit on freeze. I believe it is. Where is it? Freeze track. There it is. And as you can see, the whole track turns blue. And this essentially turns it into an audio clip. You can also do this if you are collaborating with somebody else and you. Um, he doesn't have a plugin that you use or vice versa. You can freeze that track and it converts into an audio clip that you can use later on. To take this one step further, because it's an audio clip, something that many people don't realize who even use the freeze function is that if you drag down that, um, that frozen clip onto an audio channel like we have here in number one, um, it will literally convert what you did in the MIDI track to a playable audio loop. You can even do this with... Uh, you can do it with melody, you can do it with vocals, you can do it with vocal chops, and um, anything that you do that's MIDI based. You can convert into an audio sample that you can later on use in whatever productions you have. Beware though that once you drag this down onto an audio clip, um, it, it deletes the MIDI data that it was before. Um, but this is a big, big, big uh, speed up if you're, you've been used to file exporting every single stem and then dragging them back into Ableton just to convert them to audio. Alternatively, there's other ways to do this by routing into each other, but this is the easiest way. So the next thing we have is number two, obviously. Uh, we have a row of snare drums. And now if you hear it, let's just give it a play here. They are very, very, very stagnant. And to make things go up and down, you need to adjust the velocity of the the drums or whatever you use, like a piano or whatever. So to do like a, a roll, let's just say, you would have to drag each one of these points down and make them chronologically higher and higher and higher so that they go do, 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 and hit harder as it goes up. But this can get really, really, really challenging if you're like in this situation where you have 40 plus snare drums and you need to make them all fit within an aligned grid. Now this is a very, very obscure um, Ableton command that most people don't know and I'd, I'd wager to say that like 75% of Ableton users, even long time ones, don't know. If you hold the, uh, I believe it's the control key, you can literally click down here where the uh, automations are and you can draw out a vector and you can draw where you want it to end and where you want it to begin and it will literally re, uh, redo all of your automations or I'm sorry your velocities to fit that vector um, now this does not work if I select uh, let's say one or two vectors here like if I was to select the two of those with I think it's the alt key no okay if I just select one of them and if I draw that line out, it will only affect the one that's selected. So that can be useful too. Like if I select this note here and then these notes here, and then I want to draw out these two higher, we can do that all at once very, very quickly. So that's something cool with the new, uh, the new velocity system. Um, the third thing we have introduced in Ableton Live 9 is the curved automation arm. Um, before this, you were very limited to uh, things such as this where you had uh, point by point and you had vector based automation arms where you you had to do everything in straight lines 
Now, I, while I still use the straight lines a lot, I tend to use the curved lines as well. And when I went into Ableton 9, I had no idea how to configure these new curved lines. So just to speed it up, um, you draw a triangle line like normal. And then to make a curve or a curve automation of any sort, all you have to do is hold the Alt key and you can drag that up or down and it will bend essentially the automation arm that you have. You can also hold the control key, and this is just a side thing, and drag points up or down, exactly up or down, without moving them right or left at all. Just another quick tip that may help you in the future. So number four, we have the uh, one of the most obscure elements of Ableton. Um, it's something that most DAWs don't do, but beside, with the exception of, I believe, Sony Vegas. Um, and that, as you can see, this looks like a film roll, and that is because we are dealing with a movie file in Ableton Live. Now, something that most people don't know is that you can use movie files in Ableton, and you can actually morph them and stuff. I don't recommend it because you get frame rate issues and such, but you can actually work with uh, video files within your projects. This can be really cool if you have a score or if you're trying to make Foley or sound effects or sound design for a film and you need to watch the film while you do it. And rather than triggering a video player on this screen while you hit the play button on Ableton, you can, all, you can do it all at once through Ableton Live. So as you can see, I have an MOV file here. If I double click on it, uh, you can see down here it says MOV. That's just the proof of it. Uh, my, my face is in the way on the screen. But it is, in fact, an MOV file. And if I... Um, go to the view screen and we go to the video window we can actually see the video as it works so if I hit play here and let's enable the audio for this track this be we really have cool footage the actual it. video really from cool. my heads music video <laughs> so this would be really cool footage for a uh, video <laughs> yeah you don't say well any rate if you want to see that music video you can actually click in the upper left or right for you I always get that wrong um, and yeah, you can deal with video, you can actually warp it like audio if you really feel so inclined, but it doesn't work as well as you would hope it would because you're limited to um, the frame rate of the video at recording time. So if you record it at like 240 frames, yeah, of course you can do some really cool stretching and stuff, but I don't recommend it whatsoever. So the last tip I have is something that's very, very straightforward. Um, if I say hypothetically I have a project with 20 or 30 channels on it and I want to listen to the top two and we, I don't want to listen to anything else. So when you're just starting out a good option would be to mute every single channel that isn't those two channels. But what, what you need to learn to do is to do multiple solo um, or soloing multiple channels at once but this seems impossible with the default solo because when you solo anything and try to solo something else it just disables the other thing. Now there's a quick keyboard shortcut you can do to um, you know actually get around this. All we have to do is hold the control key and then press the um, solo buttons and then we can solo as many tracks as we want and in the same token disable them or disengage them. If you want to disengage them all at once all you have to do is do the exact same thing you normally do with a solo button or hit and hit another solo or hit the solo itself. Like So let's just show that. And then it disables all the solos at once as if they were just one channel. So I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, give me a like. If you disliked it, dislike it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And if you have any other cool tips about Ableton that many people might not know, uh, leave it below. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. I do a video every Wednesday and Friday. I do vlogs. I do Ableton videos, DJ videos, and um, the like. So uh, thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time. And this is Julian of Julian Gray Media, and I'll talk to you later.